In this video, we will discuss about the genetic improvement in animal performance. We define genetic improvement as the overall improvement in a flock or herd brought about by selection, giving due considerations to a number of traits that contribute to the flocks or herds breeding objective. The breeding objective here refers to the traits that must be improved to influence the profit of the production system. Relative to the breeding or selection objective is the identification of the selection criteria to be used as basis in evaluating each animal to be able to decide as to which animals will be retained for breeding. Meanwhile, animal performance refers to the phenotypic expression or observable responses of the animal as determined by the interaction of its genotype and its environment. And it is the ultimate goal of a genetic improvement program to improve the animal performance in relation to production of the desired animal product. As I have mentioned previously, genetic improvement is attained through the process of selection. Selection refers to the process in which certain individuals in a population are favored over the others for the production of the next generation. And selection could be natural or artificial. Natural selection occurs when the natural forces favor the survival of the most fitted individuals. It is described by the survival of the fittest principle, such that it is the fitness or inherent ability of the animal that dictates the probability of its survival and be able to reproduce. On the other hand, artificial selection or selective breeding occurs when individuals are selected for the production of the next generation based on the rules set by man. This means that human intervention is involved in the process of selecting which individuals would be allowed to survive and reproduce. Artificial selection can be done for a single trait or more than one trait, or in favor of or against a specific trait. In doing multiple trait selection, there are three methods that can be followed. The tandem method, independent culling levels, and selection index. So let's differentiate the three methods. Tandem method refers to the sequential selection of useful traits aiming at improving one trait at a time. A single trait is used as the selection criterion for one or more generations. Then once the desired level of quality in the single trait is achieved, the selection then will focus on a second trait and cull animals that did not meet the threshold set for that particular trait. For example, a breeder may have an objective of increasing growth rate, decreasing back fat, and increasing litter size. In the first generation, selection would be in favor of the fastest growing hogs. This is then followed in tandem in the second generation by selecting the leanest hogs or those animals with lowest back fat. Then finally, once the desired back fat thickness is attained with the previously achieved level of growth rate held constant, Hugs from the largest liters are selected in the succeeding generation. Next is the independent culling levels. This is a method where minimum standards of performance are established for each trait in the criteria, such that only animals that satisfy the minimum standard set for all traits are selected and used in the succeeding breeding. Conversely, progenies that fall below the desired quality in any one characteristic being measured will be culled regardless of their level of excellence on other traits. For example, minimum standards are set for growth rate, back fat thickness, and litter size. Any animal that fails to meet the quality threshold set for any one of these criteria is culled from the breeding program. The third method of multiple trait selection is the selection index. Selection index is a method of artificial selection in which several useful traits are selected simultaneously. Then, the net values of all traits of the selection criteria are combined into a single index value or score. The index is derived utilizing the heritability of the traits, correlation among traits, and economic value of each trait. After which, selection is then based on the ranking of individuals according to index value. In doing the index selection method, first, each trait that is going to be selected is assigned by a weight. The weight given to each trait depends on the perceived importance of the trait. The weighting value is multiplied by the observed value in each individual animal. Then, 
the score for each of the characteristics is summed for each individual, arriving at an index score for that animal. Then, selection is done such that only those with the highest index score are selected for breeding and the rest are carled and removed in the breeding program. Now, let's take a look at the use of selection index in the selection for patenting hug production utilizing the performance of the animal in terms of growth rate as indicated by the average daily gain, feed efficiency as indicated by the feed conversion ratio, and leanness as indicated by the back fat thickness in establishing the index score of the animals. Average daily gain or ADG refers to the average daily increase in the live weight during the period of fattening. Higher values for ADG indicate faster growth rate, hence better performance. Meanwhile, feed conversion ratio or FCR tells us how many kilograms of feed is consumed in order for the animal to gain a kilogram of live weight. Lower FCR values are desired as animals that have lower FCR are considered more efficient in converting feed to an equivalent weight gain. And finally, the back fat thickness or BFT indicates thickness of the fat at the back of the animal at the level of the last rib. Similar to FCR, lower BFT values are desired as carcass of animals with lower BFT have more lean yield than those with higher values. Growth rate, feed efficiency, and back fat are correlated such that fast-growing lean animals are more efficient. Using the ADG, FCR, and BFT as the animal performance parameters, selection index score is calculated as 240 plus the product of 100 and ADG in kilograms minus the product of 50 and FCR minus the product of 19.7 and BFT in centimeters. Suppose that pig number 1 has an ADG of 0.65 kg, FCR of 2.5, and BFT of 2 centimeters. The selection index of this animal is calculated as 240 plus the product of 100.65 minus the product of 50 and 2.5 minus the product of 19.7 and 2 or 240 plus 65 minus 125 minus 39.4 and the calculated selection index score of this animal is 140.6. The selection index score of other animals will be calculated in the same way using their respective ADG FCR, and BFT. Then, suppose that we calculated the selection index scores for 10 animals. The next step is to rank them according to the selection index scores they have. In this example, if we are to select only 30% of the animals, only the top 3 animals having the 3 highest scores, namely pig number 7, pig number 8, and pig number 1 will be selected, while the rest will be removed in the breeding program. Now, let's describe what a breeding scheme is. Breeding scheme refers to a program aiming at defined breeding objectives for the production of the next generation of animals. So basically, a breeding scheme describes a program or plan as to which animals in the herd will be used in breeding in order to produce progenies or offspring that possess the traits included in the breeding objectives. This slide shows a typical breeding scheme being used in producing goats for Chabon production. The Philippine native goats are considered inferior to exotic breeds in terms of meat and milk production. In the scheme, upgrading of the Philippine native goat is first done using a dual-purpose exotic breed, Anglo-Nubian. Breeding can be done naturally through mating or through the use of artificial insemination. So the first breeding involves crossing of a purebred Anglo-Nubian buck with a Philippine native doe. The F1, or the first generation female, with a bloodline of 50% Anglo-Nubian and 50% native, will be back-crossed to another purebred Anglo-Nubian back to produce the F2 doe. Take note that in doing back-cross, a new back which is not related to the F1 doe will be used. The F1 doe should not be bred by its sire to prevent inbreeding. Then the final cross involves mating the F2 doe with a purebred bower back to produce the terminal progenies with bloodline of 50% Boer, 37.5% Anglo-Nubian, and 12.5% Native. 
The terminal offspring produced in the scheme are called three-way crossbreed goats. Based on the study conducted at the CLSU Small Ruminant Center, three-way crossbreed kids can have a birth weight which is 91% heavier than the birth weight of native kids. This is the reason why improving the milk production characteristics of the native goats through upgrading is first done, so that three-way crossbreed kids can suckle the right amount of milk from their dams. As further described in the study, three-way crossbreed goats can reach a mature weight which is about 54% heavier than that of native goats. The three-way crossbreed goats can now be sold as a slaughter animals for Shebon production. Meanwhile, male offspring produced during the process of upgrading can also be sold as slaughter animals. This slide shows a typical breeding scheme for fatten or hug production. First cross is done between a purebred land race boar and a purebred large white sow. These two swine breeds and their crosses are the most commonly and popularly used terminal dams in the production of market hugs, being known for their prolificacy and good mothering ability. Studies have shown that crossbreds are superior to purebred animals as far as litter size and weight at birth and at weaning are concerned. It has also been observed that mothering ability of crossbred sows are better than purebreds. In this scheme, the final cross involves mating the land race large white F1 sow with purebred Duroc boar. Duroc is known for its fast growth, good body constitution, and strong legs. Slaughter pigs produced from this mating scheme are known for their fast growth, better feed efficiency, and good muscle development with desirable carcass quality. Another commonly used breeding scheme for producing fatteners or slaughter hogs is mating F1 Duroc Pitrain crossbred boar with the F2 Landry's large white crossbred sow. In dairy buffalo production, pure breeding of Riberin Mura buffalo is being used in the breeding scheme such that purity of the breed is maintained in order to maximize the milk production capacity of the animals. The Philippine Carabao, a swamp-type buffalo, is traditionally used as draft animal and to some extent a source of milk and meat. However, its milk and meat production capacity is considered inferior compared to exotic riverin breeds of buffaloes. A study shows that crossbreeds of Philippine Carabao and riverin buffalo breeds Mura and Nilirabi are relatively bigger at the same age and were able to produce 2.5 times more milk than the Philippine Carabao. In producing the Philippine dairy buffaloes, upgrading scheme involving a series of back cross between Mura buffalo bull and Philippine Carabao cows is now a popular breeding scheme. In this scheme, as shown here, continuous back crossing is done up to the production of F4 progenies that possess 93.75% of riverine blood a bloodline that may be considered for inclusion in the purebred dairy buffalo herd registry. Milk production on the average is increased with higher river in blood. Crossbred bulls produced from the scheme should not be used for breeding. They should be castrated instead and used for draft or meat production. This scheme is made possible through the extensive use of artificial insemination as the breeding method.